So a teacher records scores on a 20-point quiz for 30 students in his class, and the scores are shown here. Let's try to create a frequency table, uh, for this data. And so, we're gonna create a chart, and we're gonna have our data value and our, our frequency data. Now, this is no longer qualitative data, but it's now quantitative data, right? Because we're looking at numbers. Uh, but we're still gonna treat it similarly. We're gonna look at each score, uh, as our data, and then the frequency of that, of that corresponding score. So maybe I'll even change this to say score. Uh, so for example, a score of 0. Looks like we've got two of those. How about a score of 5? Looks like we only have one of those. Um, kinda want to do this from smallest to biggest. So what's my next smallest number? Oh, looks like I got a 12 here, and I've got, uh, one of those. Uh, and then... Let's see, next smallest. I've got, uh, ooh, a 15 here and another one there, so it looks like I've got two 15s. Uh, and I would go down the line doing the same thing, uh, for each of the possible scores, a and the resulting table would end up looking something like, like this. Uh, now, it might be nice to create a graphical representation of our data. Uh, and so, one option would be to try to create a bar graph like we did before, and, you know, that one might end up looking something like this. But this is somewhat misleading because, uh, because these are numerical data, it's kind of weird to have 0 and 5 here and, like, 19 and 20 here. These are 5 apart, and these are only 1 apart. Uh, and so this isn't the best representation for this type of data. Uh, and so for that, we're gonna need something called a histogram. Now, a histogram, uh, is very similar to a bar graph in that we're gonna have, uh, again, frequency, uh, frequency along the vertical. Uh, I'm just gonna write it up here, because... There, frequency along the vertical. Uh, we can see here we're gonna need to go up to 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we'll do that. Uh, the difference is now the horizontal axis is also going to be a number line. Uh, so we have scores ranging from 0 to 20 here. So we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And of course, that should be nice and evenly spaced. And so now, for each of our score, we're going to create a bar. And when we create a bar, uh, the value on the left side of the bar is included, uh, but we're not including the value on the right side. So for example, for a score of 0, uh, our bar will start at 0 uh, and go up to 1. Uh, and so this is really a bar corresponding to a score of 0 here, uh, which is on the left side of the bar. Uh, different books and different um, software do, does this differently, but uh, this is the approach that we're going to use. Uh, and so our next score here has a frequency of 1, but it has a score of 5. So it's way over here. There's a big empty space here in our graph corresponding to all those scores that never, you know, didn't show up. Our next is a score of 12, also with a frequency of 1. And then we've got a score of, uh, 15 with a frequency of 2. And then a score of 16 with a frequency of 2. So this is gonna start at 16 and extend up to, but not quite including, 17. And then at 17, we're gonna have a bar of height 4. And then 18, we're gonna have a bar of height 8 about 8. And then at 19, we're gonna have a score of, uh, a score of 4. And notice that because we start at the value, uh, that we, um, uh, that's on the left, our score of 20 here with a height of 6 is actually going to start at 20 and go up to 21, even though we don't actually have any scores of 21, because this bar includes values starting at 20. And this is our corresponding histogram. Notice that we get a better idea of the overall layout of the data from this than we did from the bar graph.